seems legit. Hi Legitimates and welcome back to my channel. Today I have decided to pull out one of my older patterns and we are making the Siren, uh, which is a beach bag with the mesh in the bottom. And the reason I chose this bag is because I thought that this fabric was perfect for a beach bag. Uh, so this is actually a panel that I just cut shorter. So what I did was I made sure that the, the main center fish was in and then I made sure I didn't chop off the two other fish at the side. So there were two more fish for the other part of the panel, but I've picked my favorite half and put it as a centerpiece in this bag. Um, the outside fabric I used is the stuff they make nappies out of. So it's already waterproof and it's kind of got a bit of a sheen to it. I thought it was perfect for a beach bag. Um, inside is waterproof canvas and I have used hefty interfacing on these outer pieces and then I used a normal uh, woven medium for the pockets. So if you would like to see how to make this, please stay tuned. Alrighty, let's get started. So I'm just gonna pull from the top. So on the top here currently, I have the sections that are for the rope to go through. So I'm just gonna fold it over and over again. And then I'm just gonna top stitch that down. So I'm on three and three quarters. Oh, and that just knotted. That was fun. Good start to a video. <sighs> Let's try that again. So I basically fold under quarter inch and quarter inch again. And then I'm going to grab the other end and do the same. Now, if you want to, you can kind of pin this in place or use clips. But this is just to get rid of the raw edges. And then we're going to grab the next one and do the same thing again. Double roll it over. So we're essentially doing a roll hem. If you have a roll hem foot feed machine, you can put that on if that's going to make it easier for you. And then over and over. Now I'm just going to hold it down with my fingers. Uh, but you can, of course, use clips. I actually do love making this bag. It's a pretty quick sew. And it only has two zippers as far as hardware is concerned. It's all about the fabric. So now I'm going to fold this wrong sides together. And this is going to make the channel. And I'm just going to top stitch the very end to make it join. So I'm not worried that I'm still on my tall, longer stitch length, because it's just to hold it in place. It'll make it easier when we attach it to the bag later. And I'm chain stitching, because I love a good chain stitch. So again, line up those edges. And I'm just stitching about an eighth of an inch from that raw edge. Um, so that we won't see these stitches later. So that is now our two tubes all done. So we can pop those aside. And next on top of my tub are the zipper pockets. So let's do those. So you will need both your zipper pockets, both your zips and zipper pulls. I've decided to go with light gold today. Um, and that was based solely on the fact that I liked this colour zipper tape with what I've got going on. And that's what I had in my drawer. Otherwise, I was going to potentially use rainbow zippers as well because of all the rainbow in the outer print. So I'm going to fold this in half and I'm going to find the centre of the top and the bottom because it's easier to do it now than later. And then I'm just going to clip off a little corner that in there. And then I'm going to do it again. So we're going to find the center, clip it, other end, find the center, clip it. And then we're going to take our zipper pockets. Now I already drew on the rectangle because I have the template. So on the side that you drew on, we're going to fold that in half and find the center and clip it as well. Because this is just how we line everything up nice and easy. So again, in half. Line up that edge. I pinch it to make it easier to clip. And done. So now I'm going to go down to a two and a half stitch length. 
And I'm going to take these. Now, because I'm not using the bubble, it's non-directional, so I can just pick anyone I like. I'm going to put the others down there, and I'm literally going to line up the clip, and that's where it's going to be. So let's grab Scully. It was over at my other sewing machine doing something else earlier. And I'm just going to add some clips so it doesn't shift while I'm stitching. So I'm going to add three along the bottom. And then we're going to stitch the two long parts of the rectangle. We draw the short parts on to show where to stop and start, but I no longer stitch them because I get a better result if I don't. To get to the end and back stitch, we're going to swivel 180 degrees, and then I'm going to put the needle, I'm going to manually make sure it's in that corner, lined up with the other side, and we're going to stitch and back stitch. You'll also notice I didn't cut that. I just jumped across. It's called a jump stitch. Um, it saves time and thread. So where possible, I like to do a jump stitch. So now I'm going to trim off the tails. I'm going to cut that jump stitch. I can take off the clips now because they are no longer needed. Cut that stitch and this one and cut the jump stitch. If you want to, you can cut it completely off like we do the other ones, but it's so short, it doesn't really matter anyway. So now I want to fold this in half so that I can get to in this part here. And I'm just gonna take some scissors. These are the Fiskus spring-loaded scissors. I absolutely love these. They are my favorite, except for cutting vinyl. Vinyl are these ones. So now that I've made a little snip, I can get my scissors into the center and then I'm going to cut it out. And when I get about, about three quarters of an inch from the end, I'm going to triangle out the ends and I'm going to go right next to and up to the stitches, but you need to make sure that you don't cut them. Triangle it out and triangle it out. Now, because this is waterproof canvas, I don't need to iron it. So I'm just going to push it down and finger press it so it's flat and then flip down this side and finger press that so it's flat. And then we can just push the whole lot through the zipper pocket. Like so. And then it should just finger press flat for you. Now, if you're using cotton, you obviously probably should use an iron because it'll work a lot better. But that sits lovely. So let's take our zipper and our zipper pulls. I might put both on now so I don't forget later. The last thing we want to do is forget to put our zipper pulls on. So I'm going to just put in half. And then just wiggle it. I like to wiggle. Oh, there you go. I didn't even have to wiggle it. So I only crack it open a little bit because I don't want the zip to go all the way to the other end. I want it in the first third of the zipper or at least the first half. If you slip, that's okay. These things happen. But I want it in the first third like so. So now I'm going to take my zipper and I want it closing to the left. So I'm going to pop it underneath here. Making sure that the zipper lines up with the edge of the pocket on both sides, like that. And then we're going to come under and I'm going to come in front of the zipper and stitch down and around. Stitch down, pivot. Make sure your needle's down when you pivot or you'll lose your place. And then I'm going to stitch up the other side and then when I get close to the zipper pull I'm going to lift up the presser foot and zip it all the way shut and that way there's no distortion in my zipper. Needle down, pivot. Now don't, if you're using a um, metal zipper please don't run over the teeth, you will snap your needle. And then when I get back to the start I'm just going to back stitch. Trim off the tail, and now we have a beautiful zipper. 
So this should just fall down and line up perfectly. I'm actually just going to stitch the sides at the moment. That's one side, trim off the tails. I'll come back and trim the other ones in a second. Stitch and back stitch. Up the top and back stitch. And then I can come and trim off this excess and throw it in the bin. It's not a huge deal if you don't, but it's a good habit to be in. So now, I'm just going to stitch the pocket to the main panel. Like so. Now the reason I put the zipper pocket so far down is because it's a great hiding spot for stuff if your bag is full. Um, but you can just move it up according to wherever you want to place it. That's just why I've put it down the bottom. To keep valuables, and then if you've got something in it, you won't see them. Out of sight, out of mind, and all that. So let's do the same with our second zipper pocket. So again, the side that we drew on goes to the bottom. We're going to grab some Wonder Clips. I've actually had a lot snap on me lately. It's, apparently it's that time where they're all ready to break. To be fair, I have had them a few years and they do get a good workout. Uh, but they do break, especially the cheaper ones. You can buy more expensive ones and they do last longer. Um, but you've just got to work out what's best for you. I have a combination of both. So this solid purple one here is a clover one, um, and it they do last longer, and the spring in them's a lot better, but they are very expensive. So I like to do a combination of both of them. Okay, so again, we're going to fold it over and trim. So if you line up the edge of your fabric, when you make the snip, it should be perfectly straight. Um, because you're snipping straight through the center of everything. It doesn't matter if it's not perfectly straight though. My first one wasn't. So long as it's close enough to in the center and you're not all the way against one side because that'll make it trickier when we go to um, finger press it down. So I'm going to bring this down. It doesn't matter if you do the top or the bottom one first. Push the pocket through the hole, like so, and then from the back we smooth it down. Finger press it down, like that. Now I'm nearly out of bobbin, I think. Oh, no, I've got enough to do the pocket, so that's okay. I am getting low on zipper, uh, bobbin thread, and I didn't do another one before the video. So that was my bad. So again, I'm having it closing to the left. So if you wanted to, you could do this one closing to the right and both zippers would then go in the same direction because they're on opposite walls. Um, that's another option that you can add in. And then when I get back to pretty much where I started, I'm going to zip it closed again. And then that way the zipper sits beautifully. Needle down, over the end, twist, and back stitch. Trim off the tail, fold it down. And then I'm just going to pull this back to stitch the side of the zipper. Okay, over the other side. Back stitch. Stitch up, back stitch. And trim it off. Then I'm going to do it so that the pocket's right side up and I'm just going to tack it to the bottom. That way it won't get missed when we join the bottom. That's why we tack it down. Um, if you've moved it up higher, you just sew it shut, not attached to the main panel. Okay. So now that I've 
got this here. I'm going to grab the lining pieces and we're going to attach them. So you need to make sure that the zip is at the bottom. And then if you want to, you can clip it down. Or because it's a straight line, I'm actually quite happy to just hold it in place. This is a practice thing. Um, it is something that you should probably work towards if you love bag making because it does just make it a little bit quicker. And then I'm going to put the other one on the other side. Again, keeping in mind that I am nearly out of bottom thread. Apparently I had more than I thought. Alright, so now we're going to grab the other one. And again, so I've got this facing right sides up to me so that the zipper pocket comes to the bottom. And then we're just going to join this so that it's a complete loop. I do really like to do them as I go along and then I'm going to grab this last side and stitch it down as well. I like to have um, the smaller piece right side up so that I can see it um, but it actually doesn't matter and if you clip it together it really doesn't matter. Oh, just run out of bobbin thread right there. So I'm just going to pause it while I do another bobbin. All right, I actually did two bobbins, just in case. And I'm just going to go back about an inch from where I ran out of thread. And so when I back stitched, it locked in the old stitches and the new stitches. So, lining is essentially done. I'm going to take my zigzag scissors and just trim down all the seam allowances. Mainly because it will help the body sit flatter. Now, I don't have to use zigzag scissors, um, but I like them. And I got them to cut off seam allowances. So even though these are straight, I'm still just going to use these. Um, zigzag scissors are really handy when you're cutting up excess on curves, though. And they were expensive, so I need to get my use out of them. I did buy them with a 40% off code, but normally I think they're like $70 or $80 or something. Last one. Okay. So now I'm going to turn this right sides out. And then I can pop it aside and we can move on to the outer sections. So let's do our slip pockets first. Now, as you saw at the start of the video that I have not yet done, um, we're using the awesome panel. So because I've cut the panel, I'm not going to put a slip pocket on this one. So we're just going to have three slip pockets instead of the four the pattern usually has. Now, these pieces I interfaced with woven to make them slightly softer, whereas the outside I always use hefty to give it that firmness. So, make sure you print up the right way, stick them together, and off we go. Stitch, back stitch. Oh. See how that just gathered? That's because the bobbins caught. Always a fun one. New bobbins do not like to be backstitched in my machine. It's something I constantly neglect to remember. Alright, so none of that stitch. So we may as well cut the stitching out. So 
that's one. I can backstitch now because everything's kind of settled in better. So again, I'm going to put the print right side up, grab the top, put it right sides down. Now you can actually do any seam allowance you want for these. The bigger your seam allowance, the smaller your pocket will end up. So you can do anything from quarter inch to half an inch. Whatever you're most comfortable with, you can do that seam allowance for these. So now I'm just going to fold that and press it so it's flat. So when I pinch it, it will sit nicer. And I'm going to go up to my three and three quarters top stitching length. And then I'm going to top stitch along here. Making sure that that seams right on the edge there. and backstitch trim that one and then let's do the same thing again so I'm going to push that back and press it so it's flat then I'm going to pinch it and roll it over we're going to stitch backstitch now, if you're up against a wall and this piece is knocking on stuff, just cut it off. Won't hurt it. You just want to get it started for the chain stitching. A little back stitch. Trim that off. So now that's our two slip pockets. So now I can grab my exterior. And place this on top. Now, if you wanted to, if you wanted to, you could do a fussy cut so you can't even see where the slip pocket kind of starts and finishes. Um, I'm not that, I haven't done that this time. I could have, but I didn't, and that's okay. So, it's all much of a muchness. So, this time I'm going to use clips so it doesn't slip on me. And I'm going to... Clip it down, just a few. I'm not going to use heaps. I just don't want it to shift while I'm stitching them together because then the pocket will be crooked and that's not what I want. So that's probably enough. So I'm just going to top sti stitch, basically. So an eighth of an inch up to a quarter. This one, oh no, that's already not going to work. I can see. So what just happened there was, I think the thread went around the needle instead of going straight through and it creates a weird loop and it wouldn't have stitched. So rather than wait till it breaks, I just fixed it now. Needle down, pivot, I'm going to chop them now. Now with these outer pockets, I like to have different sizes on both sides as they will hold different stuff. So this one I'm going to do in the center. We need to find the center anyway um, of both top and bottom because it just makes everything easier to line up later. And then I'm going to stitch straight up the center. So that this pocket, this will just have two pockets on this side. Now you can do the same on both sides if you want to, um, but I like the different pocket sizing options because you don't carry everything that is the same size. And then you basically get one pocket per thing you want to shove in it. So that's now got the two pockets. We can pop that aside and let's do the other one. I do love this print. It is a bit fabulous. So again, with the clips, I like to clip from the bottom corner up. Clip, clip. 
Okay, so let's baste this together. It's a lot of straight lines in this pattern, so it, it's great for beginners. where I want my pockets. I am going to find the halfway point because we need it for later. On both ends. And then you can do any size pockets. I'm going to do about a third, I think. So here. Um, there are actual measurements in the pattern. But I have made quite a few of these now so I can kind of eyeball it. You'll also notice I'm backstitching twice at the top because that's a stress point for where people like pull at the pocket. I don't want it to break, so I, I do two. Backstitch, come up, and then I'm going to backstitch and forward and backstitch again. And so that way, that, that section is extra strong. Um, and so when people are pulling at it, it's less likely to kind of tear off. So that's that one done. Now we need to do our slip pocket for the small one. This one I clip uh, because the curve sometimes likes to move, which is never fun. No, I don't want it to move, obviously. So clips are your friend, and this is really where you will want to use the zigzag scissors too. Okay, so stitch back to adjoining stitch length. Zigzag scissors. Put all that in the rubbish. And then we're going to flip it over and I'm going to clip this so that it stays where I tell it to. So I'm making the clips face the front, but I'm doing it from the back to make sure that the seam is right where I want it. Clips are your friends on the curves. There we go. Beautiful. So I'm going to start here. I'm going to go up to my top stitching stitch length for the day. You can do any top stitch length you like. Uh, there is no official answer, and I switch mine up all the time. I never really go bigger than four. So then we're going to take the one that isn't the panel, because we obviously want to be able to see our panel beautifully. And... I'm going to clip them together. So again, I'm going to start in the corner, work my way up, I might shove one in the middle just for good measure. Bottom corner, one in the middle, up the other side, and the top there. There we go. Make sure it's sitting flat. And then again, I'm going to start from here. Whoa. I don't know what just happened then. It didn't even get a whole rotation in before it broke. Always just pull your bobbin out and check. I don't feel like it having more meltdowns, although apparently that's how the day's going. Okay. 
I didn't even get to the backstitch part that time. It just broke the broken spray casing. So again, we're just tacking everything together because it's easy to work with as one piece rather than two. Backstitch. I missed that last little bit, so I'm just going to flip it over so I can make sure I don't miss it again. There we go. Beautiful. That stitching does not need to be perfect because we're not going to see it. So let's grab one of our main panels. And again, we want all the pockets down the bottom. to stitch, back stitch, joining stitch length, which for me is two and a half. And the reason I clip these together is because as it gets thicker, it might try and move, and we don't want that. Back stitch at the end. And so you can either clip all of the seam allowance at the end, or you can do it now. You can either do it at eight. See, down here is quite thick. All right. So now we can grab the other one. So our beautiful panel. Stitch. Back stitch. Stitch. and trim off our tails where's that tail from and then again I'm going to trim down the seam allowance I added that much seam allowance in the pattern to allow for any issues with your slip pockets by the way just if you're wondering ah looks amazing Next one, and again, I like the curved part on top so I can see what's going on. That's just me, you don't have to do that. That is getting quite thick down there because of all the interfacing. Again, so I'm using the vinyl scissors because it's bulky. That is very thick. Last one. from thick to thin um, but we've gone thin to thick because I wanted to see this curve there's always exceptions to the rule this is one of them again trim off the excess if we do it as we go we don't have to do it later So now, with this piece, what we want to do is we want to attach our little loops that we made at the start. So, a couple of things. We want the seam allowance to fold towards the main panel. And then I want to find the centre of this and line it up with that centre that we did earlier. Ah. Like... And so now, here's where you got to get a little, little bit of thinking. So, this is the right sides up. So when we attach this, 
we want the outside to have the print right sides up. So you want to lay them so both right sides are up and then we're going to flip it over and join it that way. Um, it's not a big deal because on the inside of the bag will be upside down, but it's just one of those little things that you can make a little bit cooler. And click. So then we're going to do the same to the other side. So it's right sides up. You want to sit it right sides up and then we're going to flip it so that the right sides are touching each other. If you've got non-directional fabric or if you decided to put, oops, that just flicked me in the face. If you decided to use your lining fabric for this, which I have done in the past as well, um, it won't matter if it's not directional. You just clip it on however. Okay, so now that's on, we want to take our entire interior and we're just going to slot it inside like so and then we're going to add those into the clips lining up the seam allowances at the ends so I'm going to do that first and then I can just add this into the clips like so oops missed that one easy peasy then I'm going to do the other straight side so I like to do the big sides first on this particular bag. I also want all of my clips facing the lining piece as that's what's going to be up the top. Line up the edge. Add in the clips in the middle. We're going to add one more to this side. And then we just have to clip the side curved parts together. You'll notice I'm using a lot more clips on the side bits. Like that. And then the other one. clips on the curve. Alright, we're going to sew this right after right, I come I decided back. to change angle so that you can better see what's going on from this point. So, as always, I'm going to start on a straight bit. So I'm just going to come straight in from this corner here. So we're going to stitch, we are going to back stitch, and then off we go. Now you don't want to go too fast as there are quite a lot of layers. They're not necessarily thick layers, but there's a lot of them. So slow and steady is going to win the race. Also, this is quite a big bag. Uh, so I am in no way going full speed this time. And then we're going to get to here and we're going to pivot and go down and around the curve. So the curves are probably the trickiest part of the whole bag and maybe the base for the binding. Necessarily hard curves, but they are deep ones. Needle down. I know you can't see. Hold up. There we go. It's the curse of going around a corner, I guess. And I trim off those tails because they are now annoying me. I am trying to keep it as flat as possible so that you guys can see. Alright, last curve. Oh, see that? I just moved it without the needle being down. So I have to move it back. Continue around the curve. And up to where we, the intersection point, and I'm just going to back stitch twice. 
And before we turn it, again with the zigzag scissors. So I'm going to zigzag scissors in the curve part. So that it will flex and be glorious when we turn it back through. Like that. Oops, it fell on the floor. It's all right, I'll clean it up later. If I wasn't recording, I'd pick it up now. But you guys don't need to see me clean that. Alright, so I'm just going to use the zigzag scissors for the curve. And then switch back to, actually I don't even need to trim the straight part. I'm just going to trim this corner here on an angle um, so that it sits nicer. But I'm not going to trim all that top because it doesn't need it. I mean you can if you want to because it's, you know, a habit that you have, that's fine. But it's not necessary because we are going to top stitch this bag in a second. Okay, so now we're going to turn the bag so that the lining is on the outside. So we're going to pull it apart like that. And then I'm going to continue turning it and push the lining to the inside. these seam allowances and I'm going to pin all of the bottom. Now I like to stitch the bottom together before I top stitch. It gives it less chance to move about. That is your choice but I like to top stitch the bottom first. Ooh, not top stitch, baste I guess is the best word. And because we've found our middle bottoms it's easy to kind of line everything up. Those middle bottoms will come into play again in a minute. Okay. Clip, clip, clip. Clip. For the most part it all lines up. Oh, my arm's getting sore. Oh, not sore, tired. I would guess that is sore. My arm's still not totally better from when I heard it the other week. Um, I've had a couple of masseuse guys have a go at it, and it is feeling better, but it's still a bit dodgy. Which is not helping my cause at all, if I'm honest. Alright, so the base is stitched, so now we're just going to baste it. Um, so you can do anywhere from eighth of an inch to quarter of an inch. Honestly, it doesn't really matter. It's just to join all the layers together because it's easy to put binding on when you're dealing with one layer as opposed to two or three. I promise there's med method in the potential what looks like wastage of thread. Alright, that tail is getting caught, so I'm going to cut it off. And always clean up your clips as you go. Needle down. Bring the bag around. Alright, so you can either top stitch now or you can wait until the base is in. It actually doesn't matter which. Um, I might top stitch now. And then we'll do the binding. So you just have to pull all of these bits out so that it's all nice and flush and again I want to start at a flat bit so I'm going to do three stitches and I'm going to lift up and go back through the first one and I'm top stitching an eighth of an inch from that seam which is my normal top stitch length uh, you can make it a bit deeper if you're more comfortable with that. Well, your oyster and all that jazz. So I'm stitching slowly around the curve. 
again. We want to stop with our needle down before we readjust the bag. And that way we don't lose our position with the needle. Lift up the presser foot. I have a knee lift on this if anyone's wondering how I'm magically doing that. If you've never seen an industrial machine, they have a knee lift. So I just push my knee out to the side. That lifts up the presser foot. Took a while to get used to, uh, but now I can't live without it. It's amazing. So, did I just run out of bobbin? I did. Bugger. I don't like running out of bobbin on top stitching, but it is what it is. Luckily, I prepared another one. Ah, has it just come unwound? Hate it when it does that. All right, so we're gonna put the new bobbin in. So now I'm gonna go back a few stitches and then stitch and back stitch. Come on. There we go. It's a very long tail, don't mind that. So I wanna go back probably three or four stitches and I'm gonna stitch, stitch, and then you can either back stitch or you can lift it up and go through those same stitches again because it's a new bobbin and I don't wanna back stitch and make a knot. I'm doing it the other way because I know my machine. And to be honest, it's probably user error as to why it does that and my style of sewing, but whatever. I'll come back and get those later. All right, top stitching around the next curve. This is the last curve, actually. We're nearly back to the start of the bag, or the top stitching. And back stitch. So that's all the beautiful top stitching done. Now we've just got to put the base in. So I'm using a vinyl mesh um, because it's thicker and sturdier and can just take a lot more abuse basically. Uh, but you can use any kind of mesh you like. You don't even have to put a mesh bottom in. You can have a solid bottom. I just like it because it means all the water and sand will fall out. So your stuff, if you if you go to the beach and then you leave it on your front porch, for example, it's less likely to go mouldy because there's air and ventilation and stuff. And when you leave the beach, all the sand comes out. Now the downside to that is obviously if you put it on the sand, the sand's going to get in. It's a two-way street for the mesh. You can't wait them all. Okay, so a couple of things we need to know. Where the curvy bit is here is actually the flat part of here. So we need to find the center of those little parts. I'm just gonna put a clip because it's quicker. Same with the other end. So the center of the little parts are the side of the bag. And these ones that I've put on the end go on the center of those longer panels. So that's how the bag sits. Now, if you do it the other way, you stand, can still do it, but the whole design of this bag is so that the dip is where your arm's gonna sit. Um, so it can be made the other way. It's just, this is the way I designed it. But it does still work if you wanted to do it the other way. All right, where's my center over here? There it is. So I'm clipping all of my center points and I'm using three clips every time I do this. And then we're gonna come to the side here. One, two, and three. And one, and two, and three. And so now I just have to get all of this bag into the curves. So you want to start on the flat and work your way out towards the curves at the end. Oh, 
put this one at my door. I went ahead and clipped it all down. And so now what I want to do is I want to go back to joining stitch length of two and a half. And I'm just going to basically baste this together. So you don't want to go the full half inch because we want to hide these stitches. So I'm going to do about a quarter um, just to join it all together. And I've got the mesh right sides up. See, I, you guys can actually see this, otherwise you'd just be looking at nothingness. So I'm just working my way around the curve slowly. I do actually have to get some more of this mesh in. when you're back to the start more out of habit than anything and trim off those tails all right so the base is now in you want to make sure you haven't missed anywhere you want to go around make sure nothing's pinched uh you want it to look nice basically now binding so this is a polyester binding i get from vodman threads where i get my thread from um I have it in all the colours. In my personal stash, I have all the colours that my waterproof canvas comes in. Um, and then it all just matches. Now, it's obviously not perfect. But dark blue, dark blue, it's close enough. I mean, and if you wanted to, you could do this as a fancy loud colour instead. If that's your thing. And have it, you can get like a cool rainbow one. And have rainbow binding. That would be fun. Um, or if you didn't use the mesh and you just used fabric, you could make a binding out of the waterproof canvas so that it's all hidden. So I'm just folding it over in half and clipping it down so that then I can just stitch it on and it's done. So again, I'm going to sew it the same way with the mesh right sides up. Uh, the new One of my New Year's things I want to look at is meshing colors like this type of mesh because uh, i think it would be way more fun if i had like a blue mesh with this and then if i find it i'll probably end up writing another pattern that uses it because there's no point in stocking it for just a single thing that's less fun all right so we're clipping around and around I don't pre-measure it off the, the roll of stuff. I just cut it when I get back to the start. Um, another good way to cut this is actually by using your thread zapper because it melts it as it cuts it. The downside to that is you will destroy your thread zapper quicker because uh, it's not what it's designed for. You can also use a soldering iron. Um, soldering iron these days comes with like a knife edge. And I find that's really helpful to cut a lot of things. And you just cut it on glass and then it doesn't stick to anything. Alright, we're nearly back to the start. Like I said, I always like to start on um, straight parts because I find it much, much easier. And I also like to do this in my lap because... Otherwise, my arms get tired very quickly. Um, and beach bags are... Where I live, in Australia, it's about to be summer. Alright, so now I've cut it, I'm just going to turn this on and singe the edge. There's a less dramatic option to cutting it with it. And that's just going to stop it fraying. And then we overlap it and stick it down like that and so now we just stitch it down and thread our rope through the top I might actually show you how I do the rope thing 
Uh, it took me a while to learn. It took me a lot of YouTube videos, actually. I'm just going to pack this up so that it doesn't unravel and I have to spend time fixing it. All right, I'm going to start right here. It doesn't matter where you start with this. You can start wherever you like. Stitch, backstitch. Now, I'm going to run my middle finger. I don't know if you're going to be able to see this. Against this as it's stitching. And what that does is it makes sure that it doesn't kind of move away. And then it will make sure that it hides all your edges. So this is how I do binding. Now I'm going to lift it up to go around the curve. And you want to adjust the bag so it's going underneath as well. Oh, that nearly snapped the needle. That was my fault. I thought the needle was down, but it wasn't down enough. And when I shifted the bag, I moved some stuff. So we're nearly to the other side. Again, I'm using that finger to push it down, make sure it's staying where it's told. Um, and I can already see I've missed some of the other side. So I'm going to have to go back and fix that. All right, too many clips in the way. One just jumped in front of the sewing machine. Just gonna lift it up as we go around the curve and then back down. That was where the join was just now, and we're gonna back stitch. Now I know I missed a bit because I saw it. So I know I got this side, so now I'm just going to flip it this way and see where I missed. And I think it was just where I started. So I'm just going to stitch and pull it over and then stitch it down. It's just that first little bit where I started, back stitch, and the rest is fine. I must shift it when I start because it's always the start bit that's out. All right, so now it's all good. You just want to double check, make sure there's no more bits snagged, and then we're going to turn the bag right sides out. And then I'm going to move the camera up so you can see how I put in the rope. You just want to push this out. Again, I'm going to stand over it. push the binding out so that we get all the way to the edge like that all right let's move camera to angle so back over here so that's the bag as it stands at the moment so we just need to add in our rope i think that looks amazing and then our base i still have to see how i still have to figure fiddle with that it'll need a bit of a tory squish it's not actually crumpled it's just being stubborn, see? So I will Tory squish the bottom at the end. But let's get on to the rope thing. So, my husband made me this. Um, it's just a piece of wire. He folded in half and gave me a finger loop to help hold on to it. So, the first thing we need to do is put the rope through the bag. So I'm going to use my turning stick. This thing has millions of uses. And then I want to try and get... At least some of this through there so that it can help pull it through that's not enough actually what we can do is we pull it down and I chop out about six inches of the core so we can do that now it's gonna make my life easier in a second we're gonna chop out both ends of that and that will make it so when we join it it won't be as thick at the join I'm also gonna trim that bit off the longer the rope sits around, the quicker it gets nasty. So now it'll go through the turning stick and we're just gonna pull that through like so. Yeah, you can make your handles as long as you like. I'm gonna trim this one while I'm at it. So you just wanna pull back the rope part 
and cut out the core. I choose six inches. Uh, you can do more or less, but you need a decent overlap so that it's got strength. And then we're going to pull it back over like that, and you can see it gets skinnier. That's what we need. So, other side, I'm going to put the stick in. Put the rope through the loop. This stick has so many uses. I love it. Right, there's the other side. And so this is what's left. I like a nice long handle so you can fill it with towels and it won't annoy you. Uh, but you can do whatever you like, really. There is no right or wrong. So, here's my two bits. Here's my two ends. One is definitely longer than the other. I think I got a bit excited on one, but that's okay. So, where you can see where it gets skinnier, what I'm going to do is I'm going to thread this through there. And put this end into the loop and then this is gonna pull it through the rope so I like this and then you just kind of wiggle it back and forth pulls it through then through the other piece we want to come in maybe wiggle it in put the other end through and then pull that through the rope. Essentially knotting it is what's going on. See that? So that's essentially a knot. It's not a very fancy knot, but it is a knot. Now I want to thread this inside the rope so that we won't see it. So I'm going to start about here. And you just kind of want to wiggle it up. Hold on, I'll get closer so you can see. We're just wiggling it up just under the rope bits. You can see it popped out there, so we're just going to push in a little bit more. We're just wiggling slowly. I can't do it over there. But we're wiggling slowly up beside the edge because you've still got that core in there. So we don't want to go through the core. We want to kind of go up next to it. That's going to be too long. I'm not going to be able to get all that in. So let's start here and wiggle up. Now you can pick which way you want to come in from. I actually might come in from here. Might make it a bit neater. And that bit looks flatter. So there's a hard bit of core and then the soft bits that you saw earlier. You kind of want to go up against the hard core. And yes, I did just say hard core. Right, so now that that's there, we're going to slip the end in. You don't want to go too far down. Like if I did that, it's going to be annoying to do. So we need to get closer to this end like that. And then I'm just going to wiggle and pull it down through like that. Ta-da! Then I'm just going to, you can either do this again. So the same thing again and do it in sections, which we might do because the more you've got threaded in, the stronger the hold will be of your knot. Um, you can obviously just knot it, but then you're going to see the knot. This is a good way to hide the knot. It's a little bit of extra effort, but I think it's worth it, so I do it. So, again, we're going to pull it down the next section. It's being a bit stubborn, as you can see. There we go. Right, and then I'm going to pull that flush. See the extra little bit? I'm just going to cut that off. You can um, singe it with a lighter if you like. I'm just going to kind of melt the ends with this a little bit. Like that. Lid on so I don't burn myself. And then you pull it down and the end disappears. So then we're going to do the same to this side. I'm going to flip the bag over to make my life easier. Now it's not the world's perfect knot. I'm not going to lie. I'm not brilliant at this. Uh, but it does look much neater than just putting a giant knot into the rope. Did that the first time. And it forever pops out at the handle. 
never stays hidden. I don't know why. All right, so up, thread the end in. You want to just do the end because it's easier to pull. And then wiggle and pull. Now, you can buy loop turners, um, but they are essentially the same thing. But instead of a loop on the end, they've just got a bead. I did have one. I bought one. It was like $40. That was the biggest waste of money I've ever spent. Because the bead doesn't stay at the end. And I kept stabbing myself. So there's the bead for the other one. Um, I don't even know where the metal part is. Ugh, come on. Sometimes it doesn't want to come through. You just kind of got to bend it back and forth and wiggle it through. It is trying. And it is getting there slowly. So the loop is already less. I'm just going to... I'm not bending the metal, but I'm bending the rope to get off the loop. It will come, it's just apparently this side's being more stubborn than the other one. So I'm just using this hand to push the outside rope up along the other one. Because like gathering, it could just be too thick in one section. But it is getting there. I am near the end. Like I said, this is a bit of a fiddly thing. It usually doesn't take me this long. It's usually just because I'm recording that things go wrong. So there's the end of the metal. I don't have far to twist it. It's nearly there. So see there's still a little bit of a loop here. You can see my nail. So we're just trying to pull that down. I'm going to put the bag off my lap. Hopefully that will help. Ah, oh, come on. Alright, now I've bent my wire. This is only aluminium wire. I should actually get my husband to make me a thick one out of the same stuff I use the frames for the lunch bag. Oh, I'm nearly there. Just wants to be stubborn. I promise it usually doesn't take this long. I'm not sure what happened. Uh, but if you do have this problem, what you can do is you can take smaller bits as you do this. Instead of trying to do it all in one go like I just did, you could do it in half lots. Ugh, the end's right here. on so what happened was the end was too thick I think it's nearly out it's right here so I've moved it down of course it's being stubborn ah see there it is and it's out so now I can pull that, get that end piece out, and then just smooth it out like that. Shuff off that excess there. And that 
I can pull on that as hard as I want and it will not move. So it's not technically a knot, it's like a slip thing. Um, but minus my little struggles, like you can't, like you can see it obviously, it's not perfect, but you can't really notice it. It's not like a big lumpy knot. And then you just make sure that that bit's slid into the bag. And voila! See, it looks beautiful. There's no big knot in this part. This can gather nicely. So when you're holding heavy things, it'll kind of drag the sides in. And all done! All right, guys. Thank you for watching me struggle with that. Huh. I hope you've made it to the end. Um, and I will try and get another video done tomorrow for you all. All right. Bye, guys.